Payson. I'm delighted that you're here today. I'm Reverend Neil Worthington, and what a beautiful day it is, and I am glad that you've gathered with us uh, on Zoom or on Facebook. Um, we're just glad you're here with us, and we feel your presence knowing our oneness. So would you take a moment and uh, join with me as we open in prayer? God of all goodness, all wisdom, all power. We are grateful for this new day, a new day, a brand new day, where we begin again, where we are renewed, where we set forward with new purpose and new strength. We look on our circumstances with divine eyes. We are grateful for the abatement of the pandemic. Pandemic. We are grateful for wisdom and that power of wisdom that is ours, granted to us. It's our heritage, ours only to claim. And we bless everyone who is here with us this morning, those that are on our prayer list as well, those that have special challenges, and everyone who joins with us in this gathering. We are so blessed and we are so grateful. We pray these things in the name and in the nature of the Christ within, and so it is, amen. Well, another welcome from Donna Steckel, Licensed Unity Teacher. I will be your platform hostess with the most is today. And we're so glad you're with us. And we want to welcome you and bless you. And anyone here who's joining us for the first or second time, we'd love to know how you found us. If you're on the phone, you can unmute by pressing star six. And if you are on Zoom, you can unmute by pressing the unmute button. And if you'd like to be informed of Unity of Payson events, please contact us on our website, unityofpayson.org. And if you give us your email, we'll send you our weekly newsletter each Monday. Again, we warmly welcome you. And from our Unity of Pace and Family, we say together on the screen, we love you, we bless you, and we welcome you. 
And now it's time for our opening song. And during this time, if you're on Zoom, feel free to greet in the chat. And you can greet all or just somebody individually in the chat. My soul is welcome here, Daniel Namoff. I think that we are having some technical difficulties at once. We are <laughs> more than one one time. So, Tom, let's just uh, we'll skip let that. We'll skip that. Uh, many of us know it, so we'll let that resound within ourselves, and uh, we will go on. Uh, Donna, if you uh, um, you can go ahead. Okie dokie. So. We're grateful for those who support Unity of Payson with time, talent, and treasure. We're grateful for the events that we continue to hold virtually, which include morning coffee, the intender circle, and discussion groups. We're thankful for this technology that allows us to meet virtually. We're thankful for those born in March, and we'd like to shout out happy birthday to Teresa on the 8th and Marianne on the 20th. Happy, happy birthday. We know that each of you have things to be grateful for. And at the end of our service, we'll invite you to unmute and share your gratitudes with us. And so let us move on to our, what we're grounded in. Unity is grounded in meditation and affirmative prayer. And we have trained prayer chaplains to support you. You may call or text your request to the church phone, which is on the screen, it's 928-235-7142. And our prayer team and Silent Unity will join you in prayer for 30 days. All prayer requests are held sacred and confidential. So our Unity Worldwide theme for March is wisdom. So let us say the affirmation together. I can handle any circumstance by tapping into the wisdom within me and all around me. Today's speaker, Reverend Neil Worthington, and the title of his talk is The Wisdom of Presence. And now for our metaphysical moment, we're moving along. Today I affirm, God breathes through me and knowing this truth, I easily tap into wisdom. The wisdom of the source of the universe flows through me and as me. In each moment of my life, I pause to remind myself of this truth. 
During moments of fear, the wisdom of God flows through me and I bring peace to the situation. During moments of confusion, the wisdom of God flows through me and I am equipped to know what to do. I know what is mine to do. During moments of unknowing, the wisdom of God flows through me and I take the necessary actions. Breathe in deeply and let yourself be filled with wisdom, ease, and grace. And we are grateful that these blessings are ours to claim when all we need to do is stop and remember. And so it is. Amen. And now it is time for our mission and vision statements. So here we go. Join me with heart and mind as we affirm our mission and vision. Our mission, we are a welcoming and open-hearted community, inspiring each other to live in love, joy, and service. Our vision statement, we enrich our world through spirit-centered service, positive human connections, and stewardship of all creation. And now our speaker, Reverend Neil Worthington, will share the message with us. Thank you, Donna. As Donna shared, uh, wisdom is our theme for the month. And uh, I look forward to this theme because um, I've often wondered a lot about wisdom and how to achieve it and hoping that at some point I really could be able to uh, to demonstrate the wisdom that I've known from many other uh, friends and mentors in, in my past. So two questions come to me immediately when I think about wisdom. What is wisdom and how can I find it? There's a story that goes somewhat like this. And as I tell the story, I'm going to invite you, when you identify something about it, that story, write it in the chat. And I'd like to see how many of you and how quickly you can identify this story. The story goes like this. A young man had just become king of all of his um, kingdom. His father had died. And that father was a strong and loving and caring uh, king. And the young king was wondering how to go ahead in such a time. He wanted to follow <clears throat> what he knew to be the success of his father, <clears throat> that is connecting with the divine, seeking divine will, uh, seeking divine uh, blessing. And so he went to the very, very most holy place that he could think of uh, and sacred place in order to be there in the presence of the divine and to sacrifice. It was a long journey and he went and took with him a great uh, number of sacrifices to put on the altar. And when he arrived, that's what he did immediately. Putting these 1000 sacrifices on the altar, he then rested, he was tired. And as he rested, he slept. So, in that sleep, a dream came to him. And in the dream, God came to him. He saw himself and he saw the divine. The very first thing that God said to him was, what is it that you would want as king? Anything that you ask, I will give to you. Well, it didn't take long for this young king to respond. Um, 
and he and he he looked at himself and he said, "Well, I'm I'm just like a child. I don't necessarily know which way to go and what to do, and 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 I'm so new at this. So what I'd like to ask for is a discerning heart that I may know what is right and wrong." The story goes on, of course, that the king was granted the gift of wisdom. And not only was he granted the gift of wisdom, he was granted, in addition, a long life and riches that might have been something he would have asked for, but he didn't. Of course, you probably identified it by now. It was King Solomon. David was the father was King Solomon that asked for this wisdom. And of course, we now know him as uh, the wise one, wise King Solomon. So um, the story answers a couple of the questions that I put out in, in a very basic ways. And the answers, are, the answers are very simple. What is wisdom? To have a wise and discerning heart. How can I find it? Ask or receive. Today, I hope we can begin to flesh out those answers in a way that can be put to use in our lives. And let's do this by looking at wisdom coupled with presence. Both of these are things that we talk about in unity. Uh, unity as one of the 12 powers and uh, presence as that place that we speak about when we get together, we talk about centering and being present to this moment and this time. Or we say it every time and will at the end of this service uh, we affirm the presence of the divine. We say wherever God is, wherever I am, God is, and all is well. So I'm going to define the um, power of wisdom that we're talking about today with what I call key spiritual truth. And here it is. The gift of wisdom, the ability to evaluate discern and apply what I know is accessed through the doorway of presence. Let me say it again. The gift of wisdom, the ability to evaluate, to discern, and apply what I know is accessed through the doorway of presence. This power is something, this power of wisdom that you, that I, and everyone have. It's a divine gift one of the 12 powers, of course, of unity. It's our heritage as humans, uh, ready for claiming, but many of us left, have left it hidden in the closet or in the basement, the garage or the attic, not accessed, not appropriated in our lives. Presence is the key to appropriating our innate wisdom. Imagine with me that presence, this quality we're talking about, is a open doorway, a wide doorway to all the powers that are ours by inheritance. Outside the doorway is the past. Beyond the doorway is the future. But neither of these is helpful to us. Time on our clocks and the calendar that we may have on the wall are unhelpful as well. The very moment is the doorway that beckons to us. Presence is what beckoned to us. And this doorway opens as we opt to be still, to watch and to listen. Three very present moments choices. Well, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I believe we must be present to our body, to our mind, and our soul. The body perfectly created is wise. It has wisdom in every cell. We know that wisdom in the stillness as we listen. Follow me and we'll just take just a quick tour of the body as, a, as the capacity for wisdom. So you will know that sometimes your body absolutely screams at you. 
screams at you in pain or scream, screams at you in hunger. This is not so much what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about that smaller voice that the body may emanate. And listening is the key to us to know that. Louise Hay and others have begun to point us in a direction that's helpful about listening to the body. Because as we listen to the body and even its ills, we get some guidance. And we interpret that not just uh, literally, but metaphysically, we see beyond whatever it is that's apparent before us and see a truth that is greater beyond that. So within us is that capability to metaphysically see beyond what the body seems to be saying on level, one level and seeing a truth that is beyond that. Our bodies also react to circumstances with things like chills, uh, things like goosebumps, or some people will say God bumps. Get quiet. Listen to that body. Listen, uh, observe those uh, goosebumps and those chills. The body is speaking, the body is sharing some wisdom. Some of you have also learned to turn to your body for guidance. Uh, with uh, kinesthetic methods, you've learned to do muscle testing for guidance or sway testing for guidance. The body is a very profound and reliable way to access wisdom. That's the first way. Second way is our mind. Now we're very good at our minds. We use them all the time. We, we equate that mostly with the brain, but the mind is more than just the brain. It is that ability for thinking uh, that uh, we have, and we do it all the time. I think it was Dr. Luskin of Standard University who did a lot of study and research and posited that we think 60,000 thoughts every day, a lot of them, but the challenge is that 90% of them are repetitive thoughts and we think them over and over and over again. It's like we're almost unconscious of the thoughts that we're thinking. The tables have been turned and instead of us using our minds, our minds seem to be using us. We're not present to our mind and not yet what we could be a conduit of divine ideas. How can we be present to our mind? First, we can observe it. We can slow down the thinking process to become conscious of our thoughts. It's only when then when we slow down the thinking that we have the op option of making choices that are alternative to what we've made in the past. It's not easy work, this, e this work of slowing down the mind or stilling the mind as we talk about it. And uh, it is in fact a discipline, something that must be practiced and learned, something that if we give our attention to it, we can learn. Sometimes for some of us, we can just get quiet and we can still let mind and for a short period of time, we can be in the present completely, no past, no future. We can be there in the stillness without thought. But for many of us, that's very difficult. And even in that situation, we have the option of going to choosing that one thought we would like and focusing on that. And there, for a time being, uh, the past and the future are set aside as we focus on that one thought, that one thought here and now. When we get to that place where we're able to slow ourselves down, to be in the present moment, to not have that incessant thinking, that monkey mind that tends to get us uh, all disturbed. And so when we get to, when we get to the, yeah, I lost track for a minute, hang with me. When we get to that place uh, where we can be still, we can move beyond that monkey mind. We can cross the threshold into all of the powers that are available to us as divine gifts. We can 
cross the threshold of that doorway into wisdom. In the process of being present in our mind, we then we use the mind and it does not use us. And through this door, we claim that gift of wisdom. Yes, present to the mind, but let us, let us come now to the idea of being present to our soul. Soul is an interesting word that, uh, that sometimes is confusing. People define it in different ways. And I'm going to define it simply as this. Soul being the self with a capital S, melded together with the self with the small s. We think of them as separate, but they're not really separate. They in fact are one with different functions. That self with the capital S is the self that is attuned to the divine, attuned to the authentic self, stuff that we're made of, attuned to that higher self, uh, as we sometimes call it. And the self with the small s is that one that operates in the world that one that is concerned about day-to-day -day, uh, items, uh, what we have to do, when we have to do it. So as we meld that small S self with that capital S self, we have the total of us, the totality, which in fact really is not separate. We have uh, what I call the soul. And as we're present to the soul, let me tell you how that works. We are a meld again of divine consciousness and human consciousness. And we have access to the wisdom that is available to us to accurately evaluate, to easily discern and competently put uh, what we know to use. Again, as been being with being present to the body and to the mind, uh, we do this by being still, by listening, by observing or watching. As we sink into oneness, oneness in our meditations, uh, we take time out of time to commune with the divine, to see our own divinity. And as we exchange with the divine in prayer, we see and affirm things as they truly are. We are present to our soul, open to and opened to wisdom. The admonition of Psalms in the Hebrew scriptures is apt. Be still and know that I am God. Well, this is all very theoretical and I'd like to make it a bit more personal and a bit more uh, down to earth. Let me do this by sharing from my own experience. Don and I have two cats. And the young one is named Benji. Benji's a Bengal cat. I've grown to love that little Benji. And whenever I sit in the recliner, Benji soon finds my lap as a place where he'd like to nap. I love that. That's just really special for me. Um, makes me want to go to the recliner maybe more often than I otherwise might. Well, the other day, uh, Benji, who is such a curious cat and such a cat uh, with a mind of his own, Benji went out. We've been letting Benji out a little bit. Benji loves to climb trees and scour the neighborhood for interesting things. And um, we have weaned him, or we thought we had weaned him into the place of being able to go out, enjoy that time out, and in a couple hours, come back to our front doorstep ready to, to come in again. And so on that particular day, uh, I let Benji out, let him out the back door, which is a little different. He usually goes out the front door. And um, that was uh, about 11 o'clock in the morning. We thought, well, one o'clock or so, we'll see him at the front door again, uh, but we didn't. We didn't see him for the entire day. Uh, he was someplace, we didn't know where. Uh, and we began to 
look for some way to address uh, the challenge that we have, that this loved cat was not home. We did it in three ways, or I did it in three ways. <clears throat> One, I began to go out and walk up and down the neighborhoods. Sometimes responds to a whistle and I would whistle walking up and down the neighborhood. When I did, uh, I was very much mentally involved. I was, my mind was saying, maybe he's here, or maybe he's there. And if I just go behind the, these trees over here, I might find him. But eventually, eventually, I got to the point where my body just told me it was time to stop walking, time to come back, all would be well. Resisted that at first, but then eventually listened to the wisdom of my body. My mind throughout the day on into the evening past my bedtime as I got up again to go and check the front door and see if Benji might be there. Um, my mind went here and there. What did I do that I shouldn't have done? Why, should I have let him out that back door? Should I have let him out at that time? And my mind was totally involved with that. Or where might he be? Might he be uh, closed in someone's garage? Uh, might he be lost? Might he have traveled too far? What might have happened with Benji? But eventually I got to the place where I could allow my thoughts to subside. I could be present to my thoughts and then allow them to go away. To be in an openness of no thought and open to seeing that which I desired, the company of that cat and the feeling that went with it to come into my life. I think it also happened on a soul level as well, uh, being present to the wisdom of the soul. Well, I guess you might guess where we first went. That would be to prayer, to affirm uh, all that we knew to be true and to affirm that we could see Benji returning home safely. I remember spending some time just in the quiet, seeing that and visualizing that. And then we turned to a wonderful resource that Unity has, Silent Unity. We called Silent Unity. And there a prayer associate prayed with us, affirming those same things. And we committed that to the divine by being present to our soul in that situation. Well, the end all of the story is that Benji didn't come home uh, and uh, bedtime passed and uh, a small bit of wisdom emanated from that sense of presence. And that was simply to unlock a back gate where Benji could come up the back steps and come through a cat door and come in. So we did that and I actually went to sleep and slept soundly. In the morning, of course, I jumped at the front door to see if he might be there, but he was not. And um, I continued with the rest of my morning. It wasn't until uh, Donna rose a little bit later that she came downstairs and asked how things were going. And eventually she kind of keeps me on the hook on some of these things, revealed to me that Benji was at the top of the steps, uh, lying in the corner, a spot that he loves to do. Somehow, we don't know when he had returned. We don't know where he had been. But even in that small mundane example, we were, uh, I was able to, uh, to connect this ability uh, of wisdom, this power of wisdom, both in body, in mind, and in soul to the situation that faced us. Obviously, we were grateful to have Benji home again. But what is it for you? What is the situation that you have uh, 
that might be facing you today, where you can take the wisdom of body, the wisdom of mind, the wisdom of the soul, to further your journey, to really know, to really powerfully impact your world and your circumstances. So think of that, and I welcome you and invite you to give it a try, to be present to that circumstance, whatever it may be, in mind, in body, and in soul. Practically, how do we achieve that? I've given you some clues. By balancing the uh, wisdom of body, mind, and soul, we can use three choices that I've mentioned. What are they? You could probably come up with them. Be still. Be still. Wisdom is achieved through the stillness, not through the accumulation of all sorts of thought and all sorts of learning and whatever, but in the stillness is wisdom found. Secondly, listen. Listen carefully. Listen deeply. Listen for that still, small voice. Not only be still, but listen. Observe or watch. Observe yourself, observe the situation without judgment, without um, saying this should happen or that should happen. Simply observe and through that observance, you open the doorway to wisdom. So I've made this into an acronym. Be still, B. Listen, L. Observe and watch, O-W, blow. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna give you a way to access uh, wisdom through this acronym, blow. Otherwise, I don't know what it means, but at least it, it, it's a word that might be helpful to you and you might be able to remember it. So all of these disciplines, the discipline of being still, the discipline of listening, deep listening, the discipline of observing or watching. Take a discipline, take some practice. They don't immediately happen, but they are available to us. So I challenge you today to take these tools that we have to be present to your body, your mind, and your soul, and thus to appropriate the gift of the power of wisdom. The prize is wisdom. It's definitely worth it to go through the discipline and the practice to get there. And so it is. Amen. We're going to shortly take time to uh, meditate, but here we go uh, with a meditation song as we prepare for a time of quiet, maybe to put together a little bit of a an exercise in what we've been learning.
that I have all I need. I love, I receive, I accept, I So as we come to this time of quiet, mentally put aside all that is past the events of months or weeks or days before, and even the events of this very morning to come to this time and this place only. and breathe that great symbol of life. Breathe and notice your breathing. Just be aware of your breathing. And as you breathe, think not only of breath coming in through your nose, and your mouth, but see beyond that to where your breath is breathed in through the crown of your head. The crown represents your mind. Breathe in and breathe out in the present moment through the crown of your head. And then see that breathing move down to the very heart of you, the heart being the symbol of your body. You breathe in through that heart, exhilarated by the life you breathe in and you breathe out, letting go through the heart. And then breathe into the very core of you, however you visualize that, the gut, if you will, the very, very core of yourself. You breathe in through that. And we're present to the authentic you, to the meld of self and self, to the beauty of you, the uniqueness that you are. You may notice that we've slowed down already. And as we slow down, we slow down, we slow down, and we find ourselves in a place of complete safety and security where we rest. We rest. In this place, there is no past. In this place, there is no future, no fears, no urges, only presence. And in that presence, there is a powerful knowing. We feel it. We believe it. We can know all that we need. And in that special place, in that quiet and that stillness, we truly know. That wisdom is ours for the claiming. From that place, we 
see a doorway, a wide open doorway. And carrying with us that great sense of nowness, of presence, of peace. We walk through that doorway. We could be overwhelmed with it. The immensity of it doesn't seem to overwhelm us. We just realize that beyond all of our thinking, beyond all of our situations, beyond all of our circumstances and our challenges, there is a wisdom, a power to evaluate, to discern, Put to use all that we know that is ours by walking through that enormous welcoming doorway of presence. And so we sit in that presence, in that awesome place of appropriating wisdom into our life and we are grateful. And in that gratitude, having understood and experienced as we never have before, we turn back to the here and now of this day, Sunday, And we bring back with us all that we've experienced in the time of quiet. We bring back a new understanding. We bring back new purpose. We bring back new peace. So do come back with me now and Touch the physical world again. Let your fingers move and your toes move and bring yourself back to this world. We are so grateful. And so it is. And we move now onto the, our service, the time where we have to share in giving and receiving. Thank you, Reverend Neil. So now is the time to share our gifts and our offerings. Unity of Payson appreciates your gifts of support of this ministry. These gifts not only support our ministry, but they go out to the larger community. As you listen to the offering song, you'll have time to make a contribution. Please go to the unityofpayson.org website and click on the donate button on the top of the screen. Or you may send a check to the address on the screen, PO Box, 2582 Payson, Arizona, 85547. Ask yourself, what is mine to give? Then bring your attention to your gift and call to mind your heart's desires. Together, we affirm, 
freely we give and freely we receive. And now it is time for the dedication of the offering. Let's imagine our offerings are right here, right in front of us. And we say, we are grateful for these gifts and for the abundance that they symbolize. We bless them and those who give as we say together, 
divine love through us blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. We are abundantly prosperous and we are grateful. And so it is. And so we let it be. Amen. Next Sunday speaker, Reverend Neil Worthington. And the talk title for next week is The Still Small Voice. We continue this month of March with our Unity Worldwide theme, which is wisdom. I have a few announcements to share with you today, but there are many other things happening at Unity of Payson. Please check the website. Again, that's unityofpayson.org or the Monday newsletter that uh, arrives by email each week. All meetings are on Zoom, which is online or by phone. Love offerings are appreciated. Today we have the study discussion group with Reverend Neil at 1 p.m. This is the last day uh, looking at the book, Proving the Power of Principle. Uh, March 11th, Thursday, this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. We have Energy Thursdays once a month with Tom Quirk. The topic is your favorite gemstone. Please let uh, Tom know what your favorite gemstone is and email him at tomquirk at aol.com ahead of time so he can do some research. And on the second and fourth Fridays, we have midday meditation at noon. That'll be March 12th this coming week. And we have a PS from Neil. Yes, we, uh, we have made these uh, announcements a little briefer, and we're uh, counting on you going to the newsletter for all of the details or looking at the website where you'll find every activity that we have. We're getting to have uh, a great number of activities, and uh, we'll highlight a few uh, each week, but we are going to depend on you to go to the uh, newsletter and the website to get all of the details. Um, just want to mention one thing ahead, just to keep in mind. Rick's discussion group will begin again on the 15th. Um, and the book that they'll be, he'll, he'll be discussing is Just One Thing by Rick Hansen. So look forward to that as well. We are, I am grateful for those of you who are here this morning. And I realize that I've tackled an awful lot in, uh, in the message so I am willing to um, stay a little bit afterwards. Right after we end, we'll have time for gratitudes. And um, then after that, if you'd like to hang around and just uh, interact about the topic of today, the uh, wisdom of presence, uh, I'll hang in here and uh, we can feel free to do that. So I think that's it. And we can move on to our closing now uh, with the uh, peace song.
The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you. We're time now for gratitudes. I just want to start it with one gratitude that I have. Um, that is the gratitude for you being here this morning. And uh, I, um, I want to follow up on just one thing that, um, that we had. Uh, if you can see me, this uh, candle that's here is the candle of wisdom, the wisdom candle that we use on our Christmas Eve service. 